Sure, Cam here. Welcome to another episode coming at you from ChooseYourRelationships.com. And you know what? Someone called me the other day. You know, there's a lot of talk about Donald Trump, which has been for the past year and a half, I guess. You know, when Trump speaks, everybody listens, except for me. You know, I'm not really a Trump, Donald Trump fan or Hillary Clinton fan. Or I'm not a fan of any of these politicians. However, I know that you can use politicians on a local level to get some laws or public policy passed. You know, I'm not a fan of any politician. I'm just a fan of getting shit done. That's it. Period. Now, Donald Trump said something to the extent he asked the black voters what did they have to lose? And he, he, he's right because we're we're a disenfranchised group of people in the United States of America, and we're a uh, underclass group of people. We are. Uh, we're really in a bad position living in this country. I mean, around the whole world, really. But, you know, but we're, you know, if you travel the world like I've done over the past 20 years, we're, now, black people are doing better in America than anywhere else that I've been. But we're still not doing that good. We're still at the bottom. And the reason why we're at the bottom is because things, laws, and policies have been put in place to make sure we stay at the bottom. That we stay a permanent underclass. But what bothers me the most is not what happened this didn't happen 10 years ago. This happened two, three, four hundred years ago. This is, this is when it really it started. But it really, they upped the ante in the 60s during Jim Crow. 60s, 70s, during that Jim Crow time. And what Jim Crow era did is made sure and white people kept what they had and a little bit. And what black people had, they made sure that that was transferred over to whites. That's what the Jim Crow era was all about. A transfer of wealth and resources. So whatever black people had, they made sure before they died or before the children had a chance to get anything from their parents. They made sure that it was transferred to whites. That's what the Jim Crow was about. And then it 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 kind of uh, continued from there. It continued to the drug laws, and then it could. Continued, now is continuing to technology. Now, take, uh, they, we're being, um, they're trying to wipe us out by using technology now. Technology, when I say technology, it doesn't necessarily mean computers. It doesn't necessarily mean computer networks. It could be medical. It could be through electronics. 
It could be through anything that's uh, technology driven. Anything that we use as people. Any decisions that's being made in society. It's always going to be at a disadvantage for us. So whenever you hear people say status quo, status quo by default is not in our favor, not in our cards at all. And there's nothing we can really do about it until we get political power, political clout in this country. This is why cops do what they want. And then they get rewarded. They get rich. They start, they'll start a campaign online. Kickstarter, Indiegogo. I've seen these campaigns. They'd be up to 200,000, 500,000. Millions. Two million. So they get rewarded. So, so there's no consequences. Then the system gives the cops the benefit of the doubt. The system backs them. Prosecutors, judges, etc. So cops know that they can do what they want. The worst thing that could happen to them is they get fired. That's it. No jail time. No big deal. So this is why I said Trump. He's right. What do we have to lose? I said the same thing. What? 15 years ago. Well, probably a little bit longer than that, but you know, when I don't know about you, but when I grew up, I got the perception that if I went to college, if I graduated from high school, went to college, graduated from college, that I'd be okay. I. I'd be able to get a good job and live happily ever after. However, you know that that didn't work out for me. I had to take a completely different route. I ended up going in the military. Then I got out. And when I got out of the military, I realized that this thing ain't what I thought it was. I mean, the way things happen in, around the world, the way things get done in society, it's not what I thought it was at all. Plus, I felt like I got bamboozled. I felt like I got played being in the, in the, in the military. Because when I got out, everything that I was told ended up being a lie. And this happens to a lot of people that go in the military. It's not just me. A lot of people, they just don't talk about it. So, I figured that at the time, you know, I didn't have any skills in doing anything except for the skills I learned while I was in the military. But even those skills, I couldn't, I wasn't able to transfer them outside the military. So what I had to do was find something else that I could do and do it very well. So what I did is uh, I went to ECPI University and I got a degree in computer science 
And before I took any classes, I said, you know, this has to work. Because I don't know how to do anything else. And not only does this have to work, if all else fails, and for some reason maybe I don't get the big job, maybe I don't get the big contract, maybe I don't become a millionaire one day, maybe I might not reach that point. I have to be able to take care of myself. I have to be able to eat. I can't. I have to be able. I can't be starving. I have to be independent. If all else fails, so that's what I said before I took any classes. I have to be independent. Now, if I if I get a good job, so be it. I'll work the job. But that might not work out for me because I've seen I've seen it not work out for other people and whatever it is whatever area of activity I get in you know because in the IT field it's very broad you know there's a lot of different areas where you could practice in and I also said, whatever area I decide to get into, I have to be great at doing it. Because, see, the thing about when you're a disenfranchised group of people, you can't be average. Otherwise, otherwise, you probably won't. You're probably not going to go too far. Because what happens is, think about this. You know how many white people that are walking around, unnecessarily, unnecessarily white people, that's walking around as average? They're just in the way, basically. And at least this is across the board for whites. I mean, there's so many white people at your job. They're just in the way. They could easily be replaced by somebody that's non-white all day. And they could probably do... They could probably run circles around the white person. But they're there just because they're white. And there's nothing special about them. They're just average. But you, on the other hand, you can't be average. If you're average, you probably won't last there long. And that's the reason why it's like that, because we're a disenfranchised group of people. And white people, for the most part, will put up with any non-white person if they need to. Now, if you're an average non-white person and you become what they call the troublemaker, you're going to be out of there. But if you're great at what you're doing, maybe you're a LeBron James, maybe you're a, it could be, you don't have to be an athlete. You could be somebody working at a place like Amazon. Facebook, Microsoft, G4S, but you're great, you're good at doing what, what you do. See, white folks, they'll put up with you because they know it's going to be hard to replace you. They have to go, it's going to be a job in itself to replace you. And I tell you this because this is where the confusion comes in. Because a lot of black people think just because they have a decent paying job or maybe they have a high paying job or maybe they were the first to graduate 
college in their family, or maybe they were the first to get a PhD in their family. They a lot of black people think, or maybe they, maybe they're rich. See, a lot of black people think their things are think that it's all good. They think, see, a lot of black people will sit down on the couch and see, look at the celebrities and say, hey, you know, man, we're doing, black people are doing good out here, you know. I mean, we got millionaires, we got athletes, and, you know, everybody's on the top of their game. That's good. Those people are good at doing what they're doing. But it doesn't matter. And you don't want to know what you what why you want to know why? Because their strength in numbers. Those are just a small percentage of black people that are doing well for themselves. Their strength in numbers. If it's just you. If it's just Floyd Mayweather, if he, he's by himself, he becomes an easy target. He's weak by default. But if it's a thousand Mayweathers, that's power. That's strength. You see what I'm saying? If it's just you, you're weak. Because if something happens to you, or you get attacked, who's going to back you up? Who's going to back me up? Well, you got a cooperation that's backing you up? You see what I'm saying? I have no, I have no backing. No, who, nobody, nobody's behind me. Nobody, who's, maybe someone might be behind you. Maybe you might have a corporation behind you. I don't know. I doubt it. Corporations don't tend not to back non-white people up. If they do, it's going to be for a short term period until you make a mistake. And say something that they don't agree with. Which, when they give you some money, they don't. You can't say anything. If you're corporate, you know, because in America they'll they'll fund you to run you. They'll fund your corporation, or they'll cut you a check to run you. So it's like this: if you take this money. You got to do what we say. If you take this money, this is how it's going to go. So they'll fund you to control you. That's how that is. So that, but at the same time, the corporation don't have your best interest because they're following the status quo. And the status quo is not in our best interest. The status quo doesn't work for us because the system wasn't created for us. The system was created by white men for white men. So the only way we're going to get out of this hole that we're in, some people call it the matrix, some people call it the trap, but we're in a, hole, we're in a bad position in America. The only way we're going to get out of this, we have to pay our way out. We have to force white people to do shit. They're not going to do it because they have good morals or because they're nice people. No, you, 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 we have to, you have to force them to do it. You can't ask them to do shit. You've got to tell them. And you got to be like, hey, you got to make demands. It's kind of like, kind of like if you're, 
if you're in the military, or if you're in a relationship, if you're the man, you got to lead by example. The problem with a lot of guys out here today is they, is they ask too many questions. <laughs> so many damn questions being, being asked. You, you can't, like when it comes to women, for example, a lot of guys ask women too many questions. They asked him, how you, feel, how you feel about me? What? <laughs> you know, how, what, what do you, what's your favorite color? What? I mean, do you want to go to the movies today? What? It's too many damn question being. No, if you're, if you're a man, you got to lead. If she's down with you, She's going to go anywhere with you. It doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter. If she's down with you, she's rolling with you. Period. You got to lead by example. So the only way we're going to get out of this, you got to force people in the dominant society to do stuff. You gotta pay the politicians. And you gotta, black people, we have to be on the same page, meaning we have to have a code of conduct. And when I say be on the same page, I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about mentally, because it's a mental game out here that's being played on us today. You know, back in the day, you know, the 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 strategy was to get physical but today it's more of a mental thing now if you if they can't control cuz they can't use physical force on you 24 hours a day that takes too much money and too much time and plus they don't like they want to keep the image keep portray the image in in the, in the media so they don't want to look, they don't want the United States of America to look bad. So, that's another strategy we can use. If you make them look bad, then they'll do something. But you got to force them to do it. You got to pay the politicians in your local community, in your local city, in your local town to get some shit done. And you got to... <clears throat> You gotta, you know, money talks. That's how it is. You gotta get on the same page. You gotta get, and you gotta, you gotta just cut some people off. You just gotta just cut some people off. Some people just aren't ready. Some people just like being on the sideline. Some people just like working a job and hanging around white people. Some people like being polit politically at the bottom. Or the totem pole. Some people like that. If you're hanging around anybody like that, you're going to have to let them go. And you have to get with other people in your town, in your city, that's progressing. That's want more, that want more of life. That's hungry. That's sick and tired of being sick and tired. And they want to do something about it. Because a lot of people don't really want to do anything. Because they're passive aggressive. They don't do anything until something happens to them or something happens to their, their kids or their wife or their husband. But by that time, it's too late. Because what happens is if you become passive aggressive, you get to a point where the system, you let things go by so long, the system gets much bigger and stronger it's going to be very hard for you to do anything politically or economically. So it's too late. And this is why we're in a position, position that we're in today because a lot of things happened back then. And a lot of, uh, we've been infiltrated and, uh, basically, 
it's been a lot of informants and a lot of people been uh, taken down and taken out. And this is why it's re real, very hard for black people to get anything done because a lot of people are being paid off to do things, which is easy to do because we're disenfranchised people. See, if we weren't, if if we had political clout, or in this country, people, the athletes or the entertainers or other people that you know in your local community would have more courage to speak up and do something without worrying what's going to happen when they go back to their job or without worrying what's going to happen to their friends and family. They would feel obligated to say and do something. But they... The athletes and entertainers don't have any backing from us. They have backing from the, a lot of them have backing from the big corporate companies. That's why they can't say much, because they're on the contract. So that's the position that we're in. So this is why I kind of felt like I didn't have anything to lose 15 years ago. Because everything I did up to that point was excluding the military. Nothing really worked. Nothing really worked. Everything I, I, everything my, I did that my parents told me to do, most of that stuff didn't work for me. It was okay. I mean, at best, I was just average. I didn't want to live average life. I didn't want to stay, just stay in my hometown and work on my life and then venture out and go any place, travel, meet people, experience different things. I wanted to do more. I wanted to be more. I wanted to pursue more. So that's what I did. So I had to it was a, a lot of it was trial and error, and a lot of it was struggle. A lot of it was being uncomfortable. I got used to being uncomfortable. So, because I knew at the end of the day, nothing was going to change until I changed. And my father told me, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. So they passed the torch. He passed the torch to me, so I got to run with it. So that's the position that we're in today. Nothing's going to change. No one's going to come to save you. You got to get it started. And when you get it started, then the right people will show up. And I used to think that you used to that I have to had I had to had all the answers up front, but no, you can learn as you go, regardless of what you get into. So regardless of what job you might have, you got to always find a way to make your own money on the side, regardless. You know, having multiple streams of income is a good start. That's what I did 15 years ago. I always said, you can drop me off anywhere in the world. I'm not going to starve. Regardless of the language barrier, it doesn't matter. I just know people. I know how people are. I'm a people person. You can drop me off in China. I'll make it happen. Just because I know people. I know how people work. I know how they think. I know how people think. Within seconds. If I see somebody within seconds, I can I get the vibe. I can read people. So when you see me and when you listen to me, 
you're talking to a person that I'm not even supposed to be living by most by most doctor standards today I'm supposed to be dead this doesn't make any sense so I live this this is not a joke it's not a game this is like my lifestyle this is this is just what I do. It is what it is. So, I think you should, uh, in America, you should expect things to get worse before it gets better. Really. So, if you like what you heard in this video, subscribe to my channel. Check out my blog, ChooseYourRelationships.com. Until next time, Sharp King is out. Peace.